Hello, boys and girls. Do you know what time it is? Story time! And Panda has been waiting for you to come to story time. So let's start by getting Panda out of his box. Wake him up. Oh, come on, Panda. I think Panda really liked it when the boys and girls could come up and knock on his box. And then he would stay in his box so more boys and girls would knock and say, I'm here today, Panda. Well, okay, come on. Oh, Panda. Oh, here you are. Oh, Panda. Panda's waving to you, boys and girls. I have finally convinced him that nobody is sitting on the rug yet, and I will tell him when you're coming. Can you imagine how excited he's going to be? Yay! Because what? He really misses all the hugs from the boys and girls. Well, that's okay, Panda. They're wishing you hugs across the airwaves. How's that? Okay, let's welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so. Then we'll stretch and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. Oh, look, Panda is ready for fun. Okay, want to do our beginning song? Yes. Okay. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, Pointer? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is tall man? Where is tall man? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, tall man? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is ring finger? Where is ring finger? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, ring finger? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is Pinky? Where is Pinky? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, Pinky? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Yay! Okay. Where are the boys? Where are the boys? Stand up and wave! Stand up and wave! How are you today, boys? I think they're saying terrific. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Stand up and wave! Stand up and wave! How are you today, girls? I think they said wonderful. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. And Panda and I are so glad that all of you are still joining us for story time. So let's hear a story. All right, Panda, sit there. Today we're going to have some stories about grandparents. Yeah, we know Panda's grandparents are in China. So he doesn't get to see them very often. Some of you get to see your grandparents a lot and some not too often. But the first one I'm going to read is The Berenstein Bears and the Week at Grandma's by Sam and, I'm sorry, Stan and Jan Berenstein. So, yes, they are bear cubs. Okay, Panda, I, I know you're a bear cub too. Once in a while, the bear family who lived in the big tree house down a sunny dirt road 
deep in bear country, got out the family snapshots and looked at them. What are these? asked sister, picking up a book of photos. I don't think I've seen these before. There were pictures of bears playing tennis, canoeing, and having all sorts of fun. The bears looked like Mama and Papa, only they were younger and thinner. They're pictures of Papa and me on our honeymoon, said Mama with a smile. At Grizzly Mountain Lodge, said Papa. We had a wonderful time. What's a honeymoon? asked brother. Well, a honeymoon is a special trip couples take when they get married, explained Mama. Getting married is a very special happening and celebrating it with a trip is an old custom. As a matter of fact, said Papa, we've decided to go on a second honeymoon. We're going back to the same place and play tennis, go canoeing and have fun. Oh, it'll be lovely, said Mama. Oh, a second honeymoon sounds like a pretty good idea to me, brother. Me too, said sister. They scooted out of the room and were back in a jiffy with their vacation things. Oh, you won't be coming, said Papa. Honeymoons, even second honeymoons, are just for the grown-ups, not for the cubs. Well, but what's going to happen to us, asked sister. Well, it just so happens, said Mama that Gran has been after me to let you spend a week with her and Gramps. And this will be the perfect opportunity. A whole week, said brother. But we've never stayed with anybody that long, said sister. Well, said Papa, taking a few practice swings with his tennis racket, there's a first time for everything. What will we do for a whole week, asked the cubs. Where will we sleep? What will we eat? Goodness, said Mama, such a fuss about a simple thing like spending a week at Grandma's. Well, it didn't seem like a special thing to the cubs or a simple thing. They loved Gramps and Gran very much, but well, they just weren't Mama and Papa. Besides, Gramps and Gran were a sort of old. What are you taking with you, sister asked brother when it was time to pack. I'm taking two books, my Jacks and my Teddy, of course. These, he said, holding up some books and his best yo-yo. Papa put their suitcases in the car trunk last. So when they got to Grand's, unloading was as easy as one, two, three. Then after lots of big bear hugs and kisses, the happy honeymooners were on their way. Well, it certainly is good to see young folks having fun, said Gran as she waved goodbye. Uh, we're the young folks, muttered the cubs. We're the ones who are supposed to have fun. Well, I'm sure you're hungry after your ride, said Gran when they went in. How about some of my special honey nut cookies and milk? No thanks, Gran, said sister. I'm not hungry right now. Brother said, hey, these are really good. So sister sneaked a taste. They were good, but they just weren't mama's. Now, let's get you up to your room so you can get settled, said Gramps. The cubs reached for their bags, but before you could say grizzly Gramps, they were gathered up, bags and all, and carried up the stairs. Gramps certainly was strong for someone so uh, old. The room at the top of the stairs was very nice, very nice indeed, but well, it just wasn't home. Gramps said, sister, where do you suppose Mama and Papa are right now? Well, said Gramps, I reckon they're still on the road, just pulling into sight of Grizzly Mountain Lodge after they unpacked their things. Gramps thought the cubs might like to explore around the house. 
Well, it wasn't home, but it was an interesting house. There was the attic crowded with all sorts of interesting things. And Grant's kitchen with its yummy tastes and smells. And Gramps Den. Gramps knew how to build a ship in a bottle. When the Cubs asked him how it was done, he just smiled. See, there's the ship in the bottle. What do you suppose Mama and Papa are doing now? They asked. Well, I reckon they've gotten into their tennis clothes and are swatting the ball back and forth, he said. Over the next few days, brother and sister found lots to do. They helped Grant feed her bird friends, more kinds than they had ever seen in one place, and Grant knew all their names. They helped Gramps cut and smooth twigs for a new ship in a bottle. It turned out he built them outside the bottle and then slid them in. Wow, it was pretty tricky. And they went fishing in a special place Gramps knew about. Well, said Gramps as they returned with a fine catch, I reckon that your mama and papa are out canoeing right now. Well, I certainly hope they're having fun, said sister, because we sure are. Hmm. Better get these chairs in, said Gramps, after a fine fish fry. It's going to rain tomorrow. How do you know, asked brother. I can feel it in my bones, answered Gramps. Well, it turned out Gramps was right. Good, said brother. We'll be able to relax a little. Sister got out her jacks, and he started to play with his yo-yo. Hmm. Used to be pretty good with one of those myself, said Gramps. Was he ever? Not only could he do trips like tricks, <laughs> like make the yo-yo sleep and walk the dog and baby in the cradle and around the world. That evening, after a refreshing nap, they all went to Gramps and Grant's regular Friday night square dance. Gramps and Grant didn't just watch. They do -si do with the best of them. They even won a prize for the friskiest couple. Goodness, said sister in the morning, this week really flew by and we learned so much, said brother, practicing a yo-yo trick. Gramps and Gran, how come you know so much, so many things? You can even feel the weather in your bones. Well, that's one of the good things about being an older person, said Gramps, smiling. You learn something every day, so that by the time you're old enough to be a grandparent, you know quite a lot. Gee, said sister, I guess you and Gran are so old, you must know everything. No, said Gramps, laughing. You never stop learning. Why, just this week, we learned something very special. We learned how absolutely wonderful it is to be grandparents and have lovely grand cubs. Then Gramps and Graham swept their grand cubs up in a big hug. The next thing they knew, a familiar beep beep was heard. It was Papa tooting the horn. He and Mama were back from their second honeymoon and it was time for the cubs to go home. After saying goodbyes and thank yous, the Bear family piled into the car and headed home. No sooner were they on their way than brother and sister were bubbling over with the fun and excitement of their week at Grandma's. Well, said Papa, sounds like you had a pretty good time. Oh, we did, said Sister. Papa, sometime you might want to go on a third honeymoon. Then we could spend another week at Grandma's. A third honeymoon, said Papa. I don't think anyone's ever gone on a third honeymoon. Well, said Sister, there has to be a first time for everything. All right, the end. And that seems to have been a wonderful adventure. Well, I was thinking about finger plays that a lot of us have done with our children and 
our grandchildren, because, you know, I'm a grandma too. And I was thinking that one of the all-time favorites is Itsy Bitsy Spider. The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now that's a finger play people have been doing for years and years and years and years. And I bet your grandmas know it too. Okay, here is another story. Well, a different kind of story about a little boy who visits his grandpa, but his grandpa lives on the other side of the ocean. Some grandparents live near and some live far. This is called Grandpa Across the Ocean by Hai Wan Yum. My grandpa lives on the other side of the ocean. Where grandpa lives, it smells strange and it sounds strange. And you can see, we don't, well, I don't, maybe some of you do recognize what those signs say, because it's a different language. When I say hi, grandpa bows. That's the custom in his country. Then he hugs me like no other person. I can't quite understand what he says. And he can't hear me well. Ugh. Grandpa eats things I don't want to eat. Grandpa's house is the most boring place on earth. There is nothing for me to do. He always watches his, his TV a very important thing is on the news, so I can't watch my cartoon. And he takes naps all the time in his chair. My ball is the only toy here. I kick it in the house. And it flies toward Grandpa's orchid pots. Oh, look what happened. Oh, I'm in trouble. But Grandpa doesn't seem mad at all. His hands are warm and gentle. Still, I feel like crying. So, Grandpa quickly fetches me some peaches. A peach is so sweet, I forget about crying. And then he takes down his mini car from the very top of the bookshelf. And he even lets me watch my cartoon. Grandpa laughs, just like me. When we go to the market to buy a new flower pot, everybody says, I look just like my grandpa. Grandpa smiles and I hold his hand tight. He teaches me his Korean words and I teach him how to say them in English. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say these Korean words, but maybe if somebody does, they can tell us. That's a watermelon, that's fish, and that's a hat. Oh, they both have a hat. But with Grandpa, I don't need to say the word for what I want the most. He already knows. <gasps> how about that? It looks like ice cream cones. Grandpa likes chocolate best just like me. Oh. The next day, Grandpa drives me to the beach in the car that smells like Grandpa. We listen to Grandpa's songs. Ha, huh, now they're my songs too. He's a great singer, just like me. What a wonderful world. At the beach, we play. And I get tired, but Grandpa doesn't seem to. Look at Grandpa being silly. I have to scold him from time to time. 
He's such a troublemaker, just like me. Grandpa doesn't even take a nap. He's a bit spoiled with me. He is my grandpa, after all. We watch the waves come and go. They look just like the waves on the other side of the ocean. Now, where Grandpa lives now, it smells familiar, it sounds familiar, and it feels like home. I can say hi in Grandpa's words. I can eat the kimchi Grandpa likes. Oh, I wish summer would go on forever. Grandpa agrees. But we both know I have to go back across the ocean. When I bow to say goodbye, Grandpa says bye. Now he hugs me like no other person, just like Grandpa. And I can't, can't wait for next summer. Okay, I just have a little more time to show you a few pictures of grandparents around the world. Our grandparents, a global album. So this book shows you pictures of grandchildren and grandparents all over the world. Our grandparents love us. They give the biggest hugs and hold our hands. Even when we speak softly, they listen. That's Tanzania, and that's the US, and that is Saudi Arabia. Grandparents explore the world with us. They tell good stories we love to read together. Grandparents play and laugh with us. Grandparents teach us what they know. Together, we learn about the world around us. Grandparents celebrate with us. They share stories about our families and traditions. Grandparents take care of us and we take care of them too. With our grandparents, we feel happy, safe, and loved. The grandparents and grandchildren in this book come from all over the world. Okay. So if you have a chance to see your grandparents, give them a hug. And if you don't, you can come give me a hug because I'm a grandma. All right, let's say goodbye, Panda. Bye.